Hey class, this is lesson 412, Simplifying Expressions. Uh, I'm going to give you a few examples of how you combine like terms and simplify expressions here. Okay. Um, this think and discuss shows a good reason why it's, a, it's good to simplify the expressions. They're a lot easier to deal with. So uh, this floor plan is for a living room. Imagine that you want to buy new carpeting for the room. All dimensions are in feet. Write an expression for the area of the floor. To do that, I'm going to split up the. I'm going to split this up into different parts that are all rectangles because I know I can find the area of a rectangle by multiplying length times width. So all these dotted lines are good places to split this up. And there's other ways you could do this. It's just those are the ways that I chose to do it. So now this area right here, the length is m, the width is 4, so that area is 4 times m. This one down here, this is m this way and it's m this way, so that area, length times width, is m squared. Uh, right in here we have 5 here and then m here. So 5 times m. And likewise, we can write these other areas. And uh, this one would be, this one's a little bit different. Notice this is 0.5 m here and m here. And 0.5 times m times m, we're going to write that as 0.5 m to the second power. And this one right here, this distance, the green line I'm drawing right now, that total distance is 7 because we have this 4 over here. And plus 3 is 7, so we have 7 times 0.5m. And 7 times a half is 3 and a half. So 3.5m. That's a point there. Okay, so uh, Tamara wrote this expression for the area of the floor. Is her expression correct? And just uh, looking at what we got, um, right here is an m squared. Tamara has an m squared. Here's another m squared. Cross that one out. Uh, we have a 4m here, 4m here, 5m, 5m, 4m, 4m, 3.5m up here, 3.5m there, and this part right here is 0.5m squared. Okay, now uh, this next question says, so we think it's correct. The next question says evaluate Tamara's expression for m equals 6. To do that, we would have to do, we would have to put 6 in for each of these letters here and then evaluate it. Um, that's kind of a long expression. And I kind of really don't even want to think about doing that because I'm thinking there's an easier way to uh, an easier expression to represent all this, but we'd have to do 6 squared plus 4 times 6 plus 5 times 6 plus 6 squared plus 4 times 6, etc., etc., etc. And if you notice, you might notice that we're multiplying by uh, different numbers times 6 a lot. We also have 6 squared a couple times, so it seems like that um, we're repeating ourselves a lot of times. So this suggests that there might be an, a better expression for the area. And in fact, there is. Um, notice that all of these m squareds, um, those two that I just circled make 2m squared together. m squared plus m squared is the same as 2m squared. And then we have another m squared right here. I'll circle it so you can see it. There it is right there. That's a half m squared. So all together we have two and a half m squared. 2.5 m squared. And you can see that in tomorrow's expression. There's one m squared, one m squared, plus a half m squared. Those are called like terms. Now I'm going to underline in red some other like terms. Anything that's multiplied by m is a like term. So everything underlined in red, we can combine all into one expression. 4 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 and a half is, I believe that would be 9 plus 4 is 13 plus 3 and a half is 16 and a half. Yeah. Now if I want to evaluate the expression, it's a lot easier. I can just two, 
to two and a half times six squared plus sixteen point five times whoops, this is an m squared here, this is just m plus sixteen point five times six, and if you do that, you get one eighty nine. Okay, so the key here is uh, like terms have the same variable raised to the same power. And if you find like terms, you can combine them. So here we have like terms here. So I could just combine the 2, 6x and the 2x and make it 8x. And then just minus 4y. x, 8x and 4y are not like terms, so you can't combine them. Just leave them alone. The like terms in this one are 2k, minus 2k squared and plus k squared. If I combine those, I get the 5k to the third has to stay there. But you have a minus 2 plus 1 is a minus 1k squared, minus 1. In this one, the like terms are all these constants. 12 plus 10 is 22, minus 8 is 14. And then the 4z is not a like term with the minus 5z squared. So those we have to leave. And in the last one, the like terms are the 5xy and the 2xy, which makes 7xy minus 4x plus y. All right, so the idea is find like terms, combine them, and uh, you can simplify it to a much easier expression to deal with. All right, so which of these expressions are equivalent to the expression p plus 2p minus p plus 6 minus 3 plus 2p? All right, so uh, we want to look for, combine, uh, for like terms. Anything that has a variable p is a like term. Well, all of them. Remember that the uh, that p all by itself is really one times p. So we have one times p here plus two p minus one p plus two p. We can combine all those and we get one plus two is three minus one is two plus two is four p. So all of those combine to make 4p. Now, if we look at all these expressions, let's cross out anything that doesn't have 4p in it. And here we go. All right, this actually has 4p because we have 2p plus 2p. All right, now um, I'm going to use the red marker here to show that the 6 and the 3, the minus 3, those are like terms also. 6 minus 3 is 3. That's a plus 3. So we need just the expressions with plus 3 in them. So I'm going to eliminate this one. So, so both of those expressions are equivalent to that great big long expression. Okay. Uh, this next one, before I look for like terms in this one, we have to use the distributive property on that. So I'm going to rewrite it over here. y times 2y is 2y to the second. And y times 3 is 3y. We learned how to do that in the last lesson. Minus 5 plus 2y minus 2 plus 3y squared. I'm going to ruin this slide. This not that. This expression will slide over. There we go. All right, and then on the end, 3y squared plus 7. Okay, let's underline every term that has y to the second. Those are like terms. We'll do that in blue. Let's do those. And let's combine them. 2y squared plus 3y squared is 5y squared. Okay, let's uh, underline everything that just has a y to the first power. And combine those. And we got 3y plus 2y is 5y. And then everything that's a constant, in other words, no, uh, oh, no variable, we'll underline those in black. So we have a minus 5 and a minus 2. That makes minus 7 plus 7 is 0. So there are no terms there. So in the end, I end up with 5y squared plus 5y. Now, which of these are equivalent? We need anything with a 5y squared. 
So let's cross out that. That doesn't have any y squares in it. This has 10 y squared, so that's no good. This one doesn't have any y squared in it. Uh, obviously, this one's exactly the same. Let's circle that one. And let's analyze this other one. Is 2y squared plus 3y squared the same as 5y squared? And it is. So let's circle that one. All right? OK. Uh, I want to find one if there's where we have to use the distributive property and there's some traction in it. Um, so I'm going to go to the next page here. And maybe we'll do one of these charts too and then we'll do the rest in class. But um, sometimes you have subtraction when you're using the distributive property. Like number nine, uh, right in here we have minus 10. Well, think about that. This whole thing is being subtracted. So we have to deal with that in a certain way. And the easiest way for you to not make a mistake when you're doing this is just simply make that a plus negative 10. And then you'll remember to multiply negative 10 when you're distributing by everything. So in this problem, we have to distribute here three times these two things. Distribute there seven times those two things. And distribute in the end. So we get three times x plus 3 times 1 is 3, plus 7 times 2 is 14, 7 times minus 7 times x is minus 7x, uh, negative 10 times 2 is negative 20. You can either write minus 20x or plus negative 20x. Now here we have a minus 10, and here's where you really have to be careful. A minus 10 and a minus 0.5. Well, that's a double negative, and that makes a plus. And 10 times a half is 5. Like that. Now that we have it there, we can combine like terms. Everything that has the variable x, I'll, I'll underline in red. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Minus 20 is negative 24x. And then underlined in green are all the constant terms. They can all be combined. 3 plus 14 is 17 plus 5 is plus 22. And that's how you can find that. Okay. Um, I'm going to do one more like that, and then I think we'll uh, do the rest in class. Um, this number 11 here. So we have 3y. I'm going to rewrite this. Plus 9. We have minus this quantity. That means we're subtracting everything in there. So think of it, we're subtracting that thing one time. So I can really write it as minus 1 times 2y minus 1, because multiplying by 1 is the same as uh, dealing with the number itself. And then I'm going to change it to adding a negative. So I'm really distributing negative 1 in those parentheses. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the parentheses by multiplying that out. Get that out of my way so I have room to work here. So I have 3y plus 9 plus negative 1 times 2y, so I'm distributing here, is negative 2y. And then I have a, here I have that minus 1 and a minus 9. Again, that's a plus 9. And then minus y. And then underlined in black here are all my terms with a y variable. 3 minus plus negative 2 is 1y. Minus 1y is 0. So I have 0y. I could write 0y, but really 0 times y is just 0. So they really cancel each other out. Then I'm left with, and I'll put two underlines underneath these, the two constants, 9 plus 9 is 18. And that's what it simplifies. Just 18. So, number 11 is equal to. Alright. I think that's going to end the lesson here. We'll talk about how to do these uh, tables in class. See you tomorrow.